Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Brianna and today I'm going to be sharing the quick version of how to use Mac OS Big Sur, whether you're new to Mac, just now switching from Windows, or maybe you finally updated your MacBook after months of ignoring it. So I'm going to be giving the SparkNotes version of how to use the new Mac OS Big Sur. So I've been a MacBook user for about six years now and at first it was a bit confusing to switch over from Windows after only having ever used Windows. I promise you it's not that confusing and you'll quickly get the hang of it. So I wrote down just the main areas to know whenever you're starting off on Mac or maybe you just updated and you're very confused about Mac OS Big Sur. So here are just a quick couple of things to know to get started and the main things that you'll be using as a MacBook owner. So whenever you first get your MacBook, you will need to have an Apple ID in order to set everything up. Now, if you do already have an Apple ID for an iPhone, an iPad, or other Apple products, you can use that same Apple ID. I get this question a lot and I will get deeper into that later, but if you do use the same ID as your iPhone or iPad, you don't have to have everything synced between all of your devices. I personally like that and I love the Apple ecosystem because everything is synced together from my watch to my my phone, my iPad, my laptop. However, you don't have to have everything synced to your MacBook. So once you have your Apple ID and you get everything set up, this is essentially what your home screen is going to look like. I did change my background. This is not the default um, Big Sur background, but I'll show you guys how to change your backgrounds in a little bit later. So on the menu bar, a few quick basics. If you click on this Apple symbol, you're going to be using this a lot. This is where you will re start, shut down, lock your screen, or log out. There's also a shortcut to view any recent items and a shortcut to go to your settings as well as the App Store. If you click on About This Mac, this is where you can get some general information about your MacBook. If you forget what model you have, it's going to be right there. It's also going to tell you what version of Mac OS you have so you can see if it's up to date. And you can also click on Software Update and see if there's any updates available. Under storage, you can see how much storage is left on your MacBook. As you guys can see, I'm getting pretty full. You can also click manage and you'll be able to go through and see which parts are taking up the most amount of storage. You can go through and clean up clutter, delete items, and look for ways to optimize your storage. Under support are links to the user manual. You can also click on Mac OS support. It will take you to the website and you can basically look for different devices and search whatever area, area you may need help with. And under service, if you have Apple Care, that is where you'll be able to see that. I did not purchase Apple Care. I never do for MacBooks and knock on wood, I have never had any problems with my MacBooks. So over to the right hand side of the menu bar are a few different key things. You can see your Bluetooth where you're able to connect to headphones, other devices, do not disturb. So just like on the iPhone, you can put do not disturb on your MacBook. You can also see your battery, volume, Wi-Fi, and there's also a spotlight search to basically search for anything on your MacBook. This next thing was a new update to Mac OS Big Sur is a control center. So the new update really added a lot of things that are ve very similar to iPhone OS. So if you have an iPhone, you're probably pretty familiar with most of these updates. So control center is where you can see your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, you can airdrop and also control your brightness as well as the volume. And again, you can see things like do not disturb. Control center applications are able to be changed and switch out depending on what you'd like to see. So next is Siri. I actually never use Siri on my MacBook, but if you are someone who likes to do that, this is an option available. She's <laughs> writing down everything I'm saying now. And then after that, adjust the date. You can click on that and that will pull up your notification center. So this one's another update is the notification center. You can see updates from your calendar. Um, you guys can see that I have an update from Final Cut Pro from exporting, missed FaceTime calls, and then below 
below, you can have widgets. So again, these updates are very familiar to the new iPhone OS. You can have widgets for the weather, for time, for Apple news, and a whole bunch of other things that you're able to change and edit. If you scroll to the bottom, you can click on edit widgets and you can add different things in. This is still pretty new. So for Mac OS, I don't think there are a whole lot of different things you can do. I think mostly just for Apple applications. It's not quite like the iPhone where there's tons of third-party apps that allow you to edit and add different things in. So next I want to talk about Finder. Finder is essentially where you will find everything on your MacBook. Whenever you go to your dock and you click on the blue and white smiley face symbol, that is going to pull up Finder. This is where you will have all of your applications, documents, downloads, basically everything is going to be here. You can easily type in whatever you're looking for in the search bar. So if I'm looking for an image, AirDrop is where you can send and receive things from different iPhones that have Bluetooth. And so I love the Apple ecosystem. Whenever I am doing something on my phone, I can easily AirDrop it to my MacBook or from my iPad. And as you guys can see, if your device is near, it will detect that. And so AirDrop is a super quick and easy way to exchange photos and files, especially if it's like a large video. It takes forever to send through email or through text message. So AirDrop is definitely a huge lifesaver. So in Finder, you can also see all of your applications on your MacBook. And I'll also show you another location to view this, but basically Finder is where everything is going to go from your downloads to your documents. You can also see whatever's on your desktop, which right now mine is empty because I like the minimal clean look. The next most important thing I believe is your dock. So your dock is at the bottom or it can be on the sides of your screen. These are going to be where all of your main applications that you use are going to be. And there's a lot of different ways to edit your dock. So if you guys notice, my dock is essentially disappearing as my mouse scrolls up. Once I scroll down, the dock will appear again. And so if you go to your system preferences, which is just your settings, and you click on dock, you're able to adjust the size of the icons if you want it to be at the bottom, the left, the right hand side. For me, I personally like my dock to disappear whenever I'm not using it. I really like my home screen just to be the background and nothing else. And so here I have checked automatically hide and show dock. If you want your dock to always be showing, you can just uncheck that and then your dock is always going to be there at the bottom. Again, you can change the size, make it larger or smaller and you can also put it on different sides of the screen. I like mine at the bottom, but I've also seen people have it on the left-hand side, the right-hand side, and so the dock is just going to be where you place all of your main applications. You guys can see I have Finder, iMessage, I have things that I use on a weekly or daily basis, so I have my um, news app, I have podcasts, Lightroom, Photoshop, and things that I need to access more frequently frequently. <laughs> and while we're here, whenever you click on dock and menu bar in your settings, you can also adjust what you want to have in your control center. So you can see all the different options to place in your control center. I personally never even look at that, but that is there if you want to have easy access. Again, on your menu bar, you can already place things like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and do not disturb. So there's some things that are in the control center that to me just seem a bit redundant. One more thing I want to point out about the dock, if you guys see all the icons that have a black dot underneath, that's going to indicate that that app is open. If you want to close the apps, you can right click and click quit. And you can also right click and click options to either remove items from the dock. If you want to rearrange the order, you can just click on them and slide them over to whichever place you want to put them. So besides Finder, another area to see all of your applications is called the launch pad. If you look at this symbol that has all the colorful different squares, that is going to take you to your launch pad. In the previous version of Mac OS, it was like a gray rocket symbol, but now it looks like a bunch of different colored squares. When you click on that, that is going to take you to all of your applications, the ones that you personally downloaded, as well as the pre MacBook applications that came with it.
While we're here, some things that do come with the MacBook are basically the ones that you will be familiar with if you have an iPhone or an iPad. So things like the App Store, FaceTime, Messages, Safari, it comes with podcasts. iMovie actually does come free. However, Final Cut Pro is not. That is something that I purchased myself through the App Store. You can also see other things you download, like if you have Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, all of that is going to be in your launch pad or you can also access that through Finder applications. In the App Store is where you can find, as you probably guessed, apps. So there are some different apps that are only for the iPhone, only for the iPad, only for the MacBook. So there might be some apps that maybe you have on your phone or your iPad, but they don't have a MacBook version available. I typically don't download too many apps, but again, if you want to find games, they can be here. And some of them might even have different versions for the MacBook that maybe look a bit different than the other versions on like an iPad or an iPhone. So I do want to quickly talk about Safari. So for the longest time, I was a diehard Google Chrome user. I actually just recently in the past three or so months switched over to Safari. And the reason for that is because Safari is optimized to be more battery efficient and quicker on a MacBook, and it's also much more secure than Google Chrome. I know if you're a longtime Chrome user, you cannot fathom having Safari as your default browser. However, I really encourage you guys to test out Safari. It's super quick and easy to kind of sync everything between your devices. If I search for something on my iPhone, I can airdrop that Safari link to my MacBook, and Safari I found is also just a lot more user friendly when it comes to a MacBook and it does allow my battery to last a lot longer. So Safari is my default browser app. Of course, if you prefer Google Chrome or Firefox, Internet Explorer, if people still even use those, you can adjust it and make different things your default browsers. Something else about Apple is that they tend to call settings preferences. So again, system preferences are your settings. Whenever you have different apps open and you look in your menu bar, it will say whatever app is open, so Safari, and you click on that, system preferences or just preferences is going to be where you access the settings for that app. So here for Safari, you can look at autofill, password, security, privacy, and so preferences is max way of saying settings basically. Speaking of settings, if you go into system preferences in general, here are some basic things you can do. So the first thing is light or dark mode. If you have an iPhone, you know. Basically dark mode, everything will be black and light mode, everything is light or white. I have mine set to auto mode. So during the daytime, I'm in light mode. Once the sun sets at nighttime, I'm in dark mode. You can also change your accent color. So whenever you highlight and click things, you can make them different colors. And something else you can do here is set your default web browser. So you can see mine is Safari. If you want to change it to Chrome or anything else, that is where you will do so. Um, so these are under general settings. Something else cool about Big Sur is that you can check your screen time. And so before filming this video, I actually have never checked my MacBook screen time. This will tell you the apps that you're spending the most time on and how much battery they're taking up. So you guys can see I spend a lot of time on Safari, YouTube, Final Cut Pro. You can also look at different devices. So I have my iPad and also my iPhone connected. And so I love the Apple ecosystem because like I mentioned before, all of my different devices are simultaneously connected. They are attached to each other. However, if that's something you don't want, you can pick and choose which applications are shared across devices. So when you go into settings, and you click on your Apple ID at the top, you're able to select what do you want to use on your MacBook. So if you don't want to have your photos or your messages or Safari, you can uncheck or check those depending on what you want to be synced across your devices. If you do have your iMessages synced, there's a lot more you can do with it now. You can pin messages by right clicking and clicking pin. You can also finally in the Mac iMessage app, type in emojis. Before I would have to like copy and paste them from the web browser, you're able to search them just like from the iPhone update. And you're also able to add things like Memoji stickers, different iMessage effects, and hashtag images or Apple's GIFs.
Another thing to look at in system preferences is accessibility. So you'll see the blue symbol with the man or the woman, gender neutral. And if you click on that, if you are vision impaired or hearing impaired, you're able to look through different settings for things like voiceover, zooming, um, spoken content. And so accessibility has a lot of different options to customize your MacBook to best fit your needs. And the last thing I want to talk about is antivirus. So Windows, laptops, and computers are notorious for getting viruses. I have never in the six years of owning a MacBook had an antivirus software and I've never had a virus. So those were my Sparknotes versions of macOS Big Sur. If you guys have any questions, comment down below. I hope this video was helpful. If you want to see more, give this video a thumbs up and I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye y'all. Thank <laughs> you.